Freddie. Okay. Um, good to see everyone. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Freddie said he's not going to be able to be here this evening, so uh, we do have a, a group. And Russell, if you want to call the roll, we'll get started. Hepland Hill. Here. Scott Mast. Here. Freddie Phipps is not here. Rick Snyder. Here. Mike Taylor. Here. So we do have a quorum, and we can conduct this business this evening. I appreciate you uh, giving up your time to come participate in this meeting and, and this budget committee. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Russell. I guess we the first thing is the minutes from our previous meeting. You have a copy of those, and we went through the budget last time, and it's pretty itemized about all the things we talked about. If you'll take a look at those, I'll entertain a motion to accept those as they've been prepared. Motion, motion by Mr. Rick Snyder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Scott Mass. Any other questions or comments about these minutes? Hearing none, call the roll, please, Russell. Evelyn Hill. Yes. Scott Mass. Yes. Rick Snyder. Yes. Mike Taylor. Yes. Four yes. Motion carried. We will approve these minutes. And Russell, now we'll move on to you and your year end amendments. Okay, there's a packet of amendments that you have. And the first one's County General. We're just going to recognize $2,250 that will come in the month of June into miscellaneous refunds, with $250 of that going to fund balance, and the other $2,000 going to uh, the jail for maintenance and repairs to the building. That uh, each year, uh, E911 gives usually $2,000 back to the sheriff's. Uh, comes back through to be passed through through to the sheriff's department's budget to help cover any maintenance uh, or supplies usage that E911 would happen to use during the year. So that's what that that two thousand dollars is, and the two hundred the two hundred fifty dollars is just a we get quarterly credit card cashback rebates with the card system that we're using with BB and T right now, and it's it's usually two, it's two hundred fifty dollars at a time, and when that comes, we just dump that to fund balance. The second portion, it starts with $497,000. This is the funds for the Home Investment Partnership Program. This is a program that's been going on for several years now, uh, but they are wrapping that up. That's, the mayor can give a little bit more detail about that. We will not bring in $497,000, but because we're at the end of the budget year and the end of the fiscal year, to safeguard myself to make sure that I don't underestimate what may possibly come in and flow back through, I just put the balance of the contract in. So that's the reason it's 497,000. It's more like about 160,000. That's about 160. What's lacked? That's going to be outstanding. Uh, through uh, Tennessee Housing uh, Authority, we were able to have 10 applicants. They they picked 10 houses in the county they were going to work on and do repairs on them, uh, elderly folks. Or, low income folks. And I had 10 people fill out applications. They come out and did the studies on their houses and looked it over. And out of the 10, they were only going to work on six. They determined four of them were beyond even repair. And so we've got six houses that they're doing a pretty good job on. I've gone by and looked at some of them. And uh, uh, some of the houses were built new in, say, early 70s or something. And they uh, fixed the siding, the soffits. Uh, all new water pipes uh, underneath plumbing, uh, kitchen cabinets, flooring. They've done a good job. They spend forty thousand dollars to fifty-five or something on on these houses. But we've got six they're working on. Next year, if nothing happens, we're going to be able to apply for reconstruction loans, and there will be some money set aside to build new houses. So hopefully, some of these people that their houses would just be on repair. Maybe next year we can get them on a list to get them a new house built. And they, and they do that from time to time. I think you guys probably already know some houses that have done that. But it's a good program. You can get more money. And we're basically just the flow through the fiscal agent. The money comes in and then it flows back out to uh, the contractors that are actually doing the work. And actually, I've already had a request from one of the contractors. And until I get the paperwork that I need, what we do it, we, it, the money, we simply hold on to the money. And then starting there, about halfway down the page, all the way over through the end of the next page, 
is just me going through and just making guesstimates of what we'll need to be able to keep appropriations where they need to be to, to the end of the fiscal year. One of my pet peeves, even though the comptroller's office says as long as I do not intentionally run personnel line items over I run a category over I'm fine, but I have a little pet peeve. I like to keep the, each individual line cleaned up. And so a lot of this is just me just me being the person that I am about keeping them clean, to keeping to make sure that there's at least a penny left in the line item to, to where it shows that it's not exceeding a hundred percent. So that's what a lot of this is. So a lot of it's just your in cleanup. Uh, I am using thirteen thousand eight hundred and fifty eight dollars of fund balance to be able to do this, which the bulk of that is uh, covering some liability insurance issues that we've had come through where we're paying deductibles and our share of some of the cost on some ongoing and outstanding liability issues that we have, which is fifty eight hundred dollars of that thirteen. Will that come back from uh, any revenue that you're no, planning to spend? That's that, that just, as I call it, pure, pure dead expense. To finish out the year. To finish out the year. Is that our legal? You got anything to do with any of our legal? No. Plans? No. No, these are some issues where the county's been liable for some accidents with the sheriff's departments and things like that. And mm -hmm. I, I, I had a, that was, that's the biggest bulk of it is, is that kind of thing. And what happens with the consortium pool that we're in, they pay things, but then they will back bill us for, you know, deductibles or if they only, if they only covered 90% of the, you know, of the of the cost, replacement cost, we're, we're billed for that excess, and that's what that is. And this time of year is usually the time that we start, I start seeing those. Then the next one is solid waste. This is just a year in appropriation adjustment. Um, is making sure that we're going to have enough money where it needs to be to be able to fulfill our obligations there. Drug control is just recognizing $6,155 that's come in from proceeds of confiscated property sales back into the drug fund for the sheriff. Highway fund recognizes $153 at the top that's come in since the last amendment. And then there's $1,600 worth of some slight adjustments to get us to year end in with the highway department. And our next one would be general purpose school fund. Basically the same, the top portion is just recognizing $41,229.17 since the last amendment. And they are doing some shifting around within category, from category to category to end their budget and they're transferring some monies as you can read in the descriptions to cover some technology assistance, communication assistance, uh, special ed teachers and summer school and some other things that are going on and they're also moving a hundred and fifty thousand dollars from their reserves to be able to cover some te to cover textbooks for this year too. Then our next one's Head Start Fiscal is just a preparation adjustment for year end. Debt service is year-end cleanup adjustment. City sales tax, uh, that's just me putting enough money in to be able to cover us flowing the, the city sales tax portion back out to them between now and the end of the year. And then DMRA or other agency fund, that's just doing some cleanup there to be able to cover their personnel issues through the end of, the end of June. Is there any questions? Time to need to. to look I know there's a lot there. And, uh, and actually, I need to send those to Beth, or she can send those out tomorrow too. And the best part is, this will be the last time we'll do amendments until the budget, until the controller approves the new budget. <laughs> Amendments can be a pain in my side from time to time because they're very time consuming sometimes to go through and put together. Anybody have any questions? Any explanations? Or as far as the, the 13000 coming out of fund balance, do we need to address that with the budget item? Not necessarily because one thing I'm doing, I'm just taking, I'm just using appropriate fund balance appropriation to be able to cover. It's in one of those categories that's extremely tight where we have a lot of miscellaneous stuff run through. 
and at this point pulling five, six thousand dollars out of that category could easily force it to be over. And it's just ensuring to keep it. Because if, if we don't use it, anything we don't use will automatically roll back to fund balance. Did that answer your question? Yeah. I think his question. Well, I mean, I just wondered if we should account for it next year if we're usually coming up if we're usually having to pull some fund some fund balance to cover it, should we we could which basically means that I, I need to basically put more appropriation in to that line item on the front end as opposed to doing it on the back end, which is something that we could do. But, you know, it's it's sort of a hit and miss. It just depends on what yeah. kind of issues that right. we deal with through the year as far as insurance are concerned that causes that. Good question. Anything else? Okay. Is there a Motion to accept these amendments. Go ahead. Motion by Ms. Evelyn okay. Hill that we accept these amendments as they have been presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Scott Mass. Is there any other questions? Any other conversation or discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please, Russ. Evelyn Hill. Yes. Scott Mass. Yes. Rick Snyder. Yes. Mike Taylor. Yes. Four yes, so the motion carries. The budget minutes have been passed out of this committee. The next item is approve the following fiscal year 2021 budgets. And uh, Russell mm -hmm. and I think we have a, a good conversation we want to have with you about the budget. Uh, uh, you want to start? You want me to start? Go ahead. I got a bulletin yesterday from uh, TCSA, which is Tennessee County. Uh, Service, Association. Service Association, which uh, they send out bulletins from time to time. And you remember a month or so ago, you all allowed me to write a grant for $637,000. They've kept that in the budget. They, they've gotten out about a billion dollars, I think, out of the governor's budget. And they, they're going to approve it, I think, this week. They think maybe vote on Thursday. But anyways, they left that in. Well, something else they did to that money is they took away the criteria and all the stipulations related to that money. So now that money, we can just put it directly into our general our general uh, fund, and that money's you know yet can be used for maintenance and that, some of those things I talked about. But what I've talked to Russell about doing is taking 200 and was it 283,000 of that and balancing the budget and changing up what I what I wrote the, the grant for. And that way we can balance this budget without having to have a tax increase. Wow. We can use we can use two hundred and eighty three thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars of that money. And if and actually in the bulletin it said that, didn't it? That one of the things that the mm -hmm. Comptroller's office did was they came back and removed a lot of those restrictions. Actually there was no plan approval anymore. Any uh, they they stripped all that away. One of the things that they did allow was they we can opt to use this money to cover revenue shortfalls. So what Russell and I put together yesterday, we sat and went through the thing and weighed out the pros and the cons about taking this money, using it to balance the budget, not having the nine cent increase. And and I guess one of the questions are we just kicking the can down the road? But I don't have a crystal ball, and neither does anybody else, and I couldn't promise you if we have this tax increase this year that we won't have to have another one next year or can I promise you that we won't have to have one next year no. but it would be my opinion and I think Russell agrees that we use this money to balance the budget without having the tax increase and look at next year when next year gets here well I think I think it's our responsibility to not to put off maintenance and things that, that need doing, but at the same time, to uh, if we've got the money, like you said, we, we almost, you never have a tax increase, whereas you turn around and see taxes go down, usually it just, it just keeps going up. Yeah. So as long as we can hold it down, I, I'm, I'm if you look, it. If you no look tax at, increase ever seems to go away. Yeah, that's it. It's if you look so, at the list that I, I gave you, you can see that I kept the courthouse heat and air repairs in there. That's one of the things that dollars us heavily. We've yet got a lot of problems over there that need to be solved. Senior center roof, they're, it's leaking and running down the walls in there. And they had some problems a while back with the water running into the electrical service panel or something over there. Yeah. Tax assessor office, it's, it's overdue. Kellogg building is overdue. I, I wanted to keep the money in there for the fire department. 
think that's a good community yeah. service and the sheriff's patrol car. So I took out the money to refurbish the elevator. We can seem to keep that thing repaired when it goes down. It might be down a day till I get a board repaired. I took out the, the monies for the, the courthouse furniture. Uh, what else was in there we took out? Uh, the dehumidifier, yeah, dehumidifier for DHS. Some of the work we were gonna do is with the scales. Yeah, that's right, scales down oh, at the yeah. transfer station and yeah. in the parking lot. So, uh, you know, took out well, the, 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 the transfer station's holding its own. It, I mean, yeah. as far as, I, I don't know if they got money lying around to put scales in, but I mean, they're... But we do have some fun balance there. We have about yeah. 270,000. That much? Yeah, it'll, it's it's push. It'll be between two seventy five and three hundred. So yeah. we have so, money there. So yeah. we have an emergency right, situation. Right. So and I took out the money. Uh, one other thing, I took out the fifty thousand dollars that was the RTP matching fund grant for that grant. Because Russell and I talked about taking that money out of community, like development. community development. So we weren't going to. It wasn't going to hurt us in our general fund balance anyway. But but taking it twelve thousand five a year out of uh, out of uh, community development. So I took that out too. In the the doors. Yeah, the ADA compliant doors. They're not mandated. It was just a good wish list and a good luxury or a good addition, mm -hmm. you know, to help if we had the opportunity to do it. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think it's good planning. Mm -hmm. I'm all I mean, for it. You know, six weeks ago we didn't have any of this money. So exactly. I yeah. mean exactly. So we're still so we coming have out way ahead of the game. We could have a balanced budget and some maintenance. Yeah. And actually, we end up with a surplus. We're actually, with the changes that we made by moving the $283,000 and making the rest of the necessary changes with the school resource officers, we're still actually $35,000 to the we're, we're 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 paying thirty five thousand dollars worth of equity from the front, front on the front okay. end of the budget, which is something that very seldom the, very seldom happens. Keeping them raising their for employees, yeah, which is a good thing in this environment we're in. I'm sure, but that's what Russell and I want to present to you. You have anything? Is that I missing? Thank you. I think that pretty well gets it. What since we since I brought up school resource officers, I know we had a very intense conversation about that here last week, and. I had further conversations with uh, Michelle and Angie last week, addressed some other things, and I think I finally come to, I found out where the breakdown occurred. It did occur on our side. One of the things that the Office of School Safety with the Department of Ed requires is to have a reciprocal agreement between the Sheriff's Department and the school system, which basically is an agreement that the Sheriff's Department agrees to a lot X amount of officers to to the schools for that purpose. Well, there's a fiscal note attached to that, and unfortunately, that agreement never made it here. So therefore, the commission never approved it, and that's where we think the breakdown has occurred. Uh, I've had a conversation with both the sheriff, very lightly, but I had a very detailed conversation with Perry, with the county attorney, and we're going to work to ensure that we do not have that issue again. And I got some clar further clarification because when Angie was talking, she talked about that this was to be used to supplement, not supplant, which basically means the two existing positions we already had in place, this money wouldn't qualify for. And what the school department has approached doing is taking that 50-50 split position, where 50% is the county, 50% is the school, they're trying to see if they can get approval to make that one of these five positions. So that's where we went from seven to six positions. Now, if 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 school safety comes back and says, no, you can't do that, then we're going to be down to four officers, and then we'll have two funded locally, which we're covered either way with that. If we end up that they will accept that one officer and allow it to go into that, then we are actually coming out just a little bit ahead right. with this. That'd be basically covering our 50%. So it'll be yes. Less. And, but you know, one of the things that, uh, that Angie and Michelle and I had a very, had a, I think that they have an understanding of where you were coming from as far as this group is concerned, treating this as an unfunded mandate was the fact that, you know, a, a set amount of $35,000 
Maximal reimbursed back to us basically covers the officer's salary in a very small portion of the benefits because the benefits for an officer will be anywhere between twelve to fifteen thousand dollars because we pay a higher rate for for retirement. There's a lot of other factors that play into this, and in that discussion and what we worked with last week, I actually closed that gap of us looking at about sixty five thousand dollars down to about $30,000, which is basically roughly five to $6,000 times five officers would be the $30,000 that we're still committing to this program to make it work. You know, and in our case, we, we don't have BEP funding or, or things like that that we pull from. We basically look at it, whatever we're putting in there new, we're adding to the burden to the taxpayer. So basically, we got it down from, like the mayor had mentioned, from about two cents down to one cent. That under this scenario, that would be that approved with them approving five officers, then we're looking at roughly the county still funding about $30,000 of that to make this work. Is it the case that one of those officers that are there now is going to a road? Yes, and actually, one of those seven ever actually is moving to the road, which we absorbed on that side from some recent vacancies. And so did he break the news to them, and are they still on force? Because <laughs> he, he's gonna, did he say he was going to call well, one I, of them and actually, tell them they were being moved? Actually, he told me later that he had two that were interested, that two oh, okay. had had expressed a desire to move, okay. and he offered it to the most senior one first, he didn't accept it, and then the second one did accept it. So it was it was an, it was an easy transitional no, move. No, it, excuse me, it wasn't a situation where you know you're being forced to do it, yeah. which is a morale issue at times too. So, but hopefully, so are, are you confident or comfortable that the state will carry through with this? You family? know, after talking with 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 them, you know, it's it's kind of a wait and see to what happens. The biggest thing is is we need to make sure that, and again, Perry will have to help with this, is to make sure that once we know what the funding's gonna be, that that reciprocal agreement comes back to here and to the commission to be approved. You know, it's it's no different on our side than it is their side. You know, the director of schools can't enter, in, can't enter into an agreement unless the board approves it. Same token on this side. No elected official can enter, can actually enter into an agreement that binds funding up unless the legislative legis legis body approves it. So they it. did have, a, have an agreement of some sort. They, they did. Who, who drew that up? Did I think it's a, it's a standard form that the, oh. that the Office of School Safety had oh, sent, okay. and you basically plugged in information. But the thing was, was the fact that that agreement should have came here to be approved and then sent to the full commission to be approved. And, I, and so the breakdown is on our side. But we also talked a lot about transparency, that we're in a unique situation, that they're the money, the, the money stream, but we're dealing with the expense side, and when we put that expense on the books, we're using tax dollars to do that, per se. I mean, we have to figure out how to allocate it to make it work. And, you know, even though, you know, I see their standpoint that it's not their responsibility to see that that information flows. But in this situation, I think I have impressed on them that whatever is discussed with the Sheriff's Department, need, you, they need to make sure that I'm aware of it to where then I can pick up and deal with the procedural issues to make all this work like it's supposed to. So hopefully we have a, an agreement now about all of this where we will not have to go through that situation again like we did last week. And then because of the fact, I'll just go ahead and mention this, I'm bringing back three budgets. Well, 171 was general capital products, and with that shift of the $283,000, that meant that we needed to reapprove that budget. But also with the fact that we're moving the tax rate back down to where it currently is, that changed the aggregates back. And since I'd already made changes on the payment in lieu in 151, and and our, we knew we had to bring 171 back, I went ahead and brought 150, fund 151 debt service back to actually reflect that issue of giving a little bit of money back to debt service, which means now next year we're, we're, we're actually doing a surplus of 10,000 
four hundred and one dollars into into debt service on the front end. Likewise, my question: Do you feel confident, comfortable that the state will follow through with the local grant program? Yes, I, honestly, I think they will. I, 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 I think they will. I did. I think they will. You know, you, you never know. I mean. What happens between now and Thursday? Well, and, and evidently the past year the Senate they were waiting on the House. So, so right. when would we get our final approval with the grants? Been I think the foundation? grants have the, the grants they pretty much approved. They have. I think it's more of a okay. it's a, more of a formality now for the House. Okay. The Senate is actually they're, they've recessed. That they will I not think be they're back until to get the money out after July one. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if we if we were okay to. Include that in our budget if we had assurance enough to be, you know, say, well. From the way TCSA worded this, mm -hmm. I'm very confident, like the mayor, that it is safe for us to basically do this shift to use part of it to cover a revenue stream. What, is there, I guess there's an item somewhere that's reflective of that coming into the yes. budget? What happens there is one, property tax 40110 drops back from a, from a little over three million back down to 2.8 million. And then over on page set five, three quarters of the way down the page, you'll see where it says other state revenues. If you'll come back up, 46990 is other state revenues. If you'll look the way I set this up, if you'll look at column five, we originally had $414,000 there. We now have $697,000, and that would reflect this $283,000 coming into the budget to be able to do that. So that's the only changes that I actually made other than I did. Which will give you balanced numbers. It gives us balanced numbers at the end of the day. And then the only other change that I made is over on page six, where it talks about under contracted services. This goes back to the SROs. I had not changed some of that revenue stream. And since we were doing, I was gonna basically leave it and clean it up with an amendment later in the fall. But since we're in this situation that we're actually gonna reapprove that, you'll see that it's, it's from 251 to 228. And that reflects that difference of that one school resource officer. But we'd already, I'd already made the appropriation changes to be able to keep to put things back into balance. This is just simply switching all that around. And with all that being said and done, we still have a $35,848 surplus to this budget, which basically means we have $35,000 less of expenditures appropriated than what we actually show as revenue coming in. And then also with the change that with with fund 171 general capital projects before we were ending, we were using a little bit of fund balance to balance that budget. And with this change, and I went back and did a little tinkering, we're actually balancing this budget, not using any fund balance for it. So that's basically the changes that I've made here to make all this work. Now, if something screwy were to happen Thursday night, it might be a different story. <laughs> at this point, at this point, this is what the game plan is. Uh, the the budgets will actually appear in the in the paper tomorrow that uh, we're required to run, as well as the the other. I have to send. We have to do what's called a nonprofit notice. We have to list any nonprofits that we fund, and typically it's the town of Mountain City for the community center. Uh, we we fund fifteen thousand dollars for Safe Haven and the eighty thousand dollars for the for the fire department. So the three nonprofits that we fund, and then the notice that would be in place with us going to recess session this Thursday. It runs in the paper tomorrow. We can actually vote on the budget ten days after that. Ten days is up on Saturday the twenty seventh. We have it. I have it set since the mayor you said you didn't have a preference which day for us to come back on the 29th from recess session, actually yeah, vote to approve the budget, and the, and the, to approve the budget, the appropriations, the resolution, and the tax levy resolution. That would just be two Thursdays. So. Yeah. Two, two, well, one th we Thursday into two. And Thursday into a Tuesday. Yeah. And we need to re-vote on the tax 
Yes. Right. Yes, and I'll make we, I've and got I, that list I, I ran all this by Freddie today. He called me and told me he wasn't gonna be here and he he's okay with it too. He, I would imagine he's more than okay. <laughs> I'm sure he's thrilled with it, to tell you the yeah, truth. I had always prepared some people for <laughs> bad news, you know. Twenty one dollar and forty six cents so. <laughs> I see him, but it you. But anyways, I was just I was just happy to get to get the information out that we could do that. But. So basically, what I have here is we need to reapprove three budgets back out of committee. County General Fund 101 with revenues of seven million eight hundred and fifty-eight thousand nine hundred and seventy-seven dollars, with expenses of seven million eight hundred twenty-two thousand one hundred twenty-nine dollars. Re reapproved fund 151 with revenues of a million eighty two thousand eight fifty one and expenses of a million seventy two thousand four fifty and fund 171 with revenues of six seventy four six sixty six and expenditures of six seventy four six sixty six that will basically take care of all the changes that we've made since you approved those budgets out of the committee last week last week you approve them collectively yes sir. you sure can. Uh, entertain that motion uh, so move. Mm -hmm. uh, second. Motion by, by Mr. Rick Snyder, seconded by Mr. Scott Matt to go ahead and approve these budgets out of committee. Is there any other questions or any other uh, conversation for, <coughs> for us? Hearing that, call the roll, please. Roll. Evelyn Hill? Yes. Scott Mass? Yes. Rick Snyder? Yes. Mike Taylor? Yes. Now to your question. Four, yes. We do have to reapprove the property tax levels. Based on what you just approved, approve the fiscal year 2021 tax property tax levy as follows: County General 94 cents, General Purpose School of 86 cents, Debt Service of 16 cents, and General Capital Projects of 9 cents, which is the exact same tax rate and distribution and aggregate of what we're currently at. And you have a sheet that shows that broken down that looks like what the mayor has right here that that one right there okay. that basically resets everything back to what and this is the way it currently is so with that then we're using the same tax rate for next year as we are using this year still using a 94 percent <laughs> assumption rate only growth will be from reappraisals and new yes. ads yes and next year we'll with the fact that we're coming off of it we will have an appraisal reappraisal year the state will actually set a certified tax rate for us and we at that point we use that and if we go above that then we would jump to the hoops like we did four years ago and do the extra meeting and, and I, asked, that. I asked russell that question too you know we've had that conversation about a little bit more work uh, to set a tax rate or to have an increase, increase. in that repay present year and i asked russell you know by not having the nine cent tax increase this year by using this money to balance the budget, is, does that offset the aggravation that he and I would have to go through to, you know, do it next year? Should that be the case? And of course, he said yes. Well, we he, that, the answer to that is yes. And then we don't know anyway. Well, it's one thing if we had to raise them a little bit anyway. That's right. We can get out of not having to raise them at all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say the same thing to you that I said to the mayor. We will deal with 21-22 when the time comes. Right now, my focus, let's get 2021 approved. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, it's during this unprecedented time, time when we, yeah. we've had all these shortfalls because of all the, the unforeseen and unpredictable happenings. Who's to say that we won't have some growth back in the receivables next year and that's very good. Would, if the state prisoner money could yeah. come back he set that low uh, eddie says he can do 50 we set it at 45 should that be the case that we go back to 50 you know there'll be a little bit of uh, a little bit of growth there mm -hmm. it's hard to predict anything these days but you mm -hmm. would but but if you i guess as one would expect the way it's been it would seems to want to get better to the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I hope we could look yeah, at that with we the need a motion and a, and a second to pass also this move. set tax rate. So move by I me, mean, a motion by Mr. Scott Mass to set the tax rate that you presented. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Evelyn Hill. Is there any other questions about uh, 
uh, setting the tax rate at this uh, current current level. Here in the caller roll, please. Evelyn Hill. Yes. Scott Mast. Yes. Rick Snyder. Yes. Mike Taylor. Yes. Uh, four yes. Motion carried. Our plan is to present this out of this committee to full commission on Thursday evening. Okay. okay. And. Uh, so the budget that'll be going out in the paper tomorrow will be the budget we approved tonight, even though. Yes. The only difference is the only, there's just two changes. There would be two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. Well, actually, the fund one seventy-one doesn't show up there. The only change would be with county general fund. The amount that shows as local taxes comes down two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars, and the state revenues go up two eighty-three. Okay. That's so, the only change that there would be because everything else is still balanced. And since you have approved everything, then I'm going to give you this. This is this is the budget that will be presented Thursday night. <laughs> and it's that time of year. Russell, you're a tree killer. I am a tree killer, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, what we'll do is we'll plan to go to recess session. We will come back on the 29th, starting at 6 o'clock that night. We need to allow... Typically, we do about an hour for any kind of taxpayer public input on the budget. There will be two inspection copies of the budget available. One will be in the mayor's office. The other one I will have in my office if somebody would want to see it. Uh, but basically, all that's self-explanatory here. The four items that we'll cover tonight on the 29th would be approve the budget, approve the, ta uh, the, tax, uh, the budget appropriation, and the tax levy. And all that's included in your packet. Uh, I've also put together, like we've done in years past, there's a budget highlight sheet. Basically, shows tax rate 205, no increase. Shows a penny generates 29,871.11 as a 94% collection rate, which is $129.57 from increase from last year. Then we just break it down, and what I basically did. I just showed this year the growth that each of the funds would get. County Generals receiving growth of 12,180, General Capital Products 1166, debt service loan over 2,000, school system a little over 11,000. Break down the payment in lieu. Uh, then the other, just a couple other hits would be with the fact that we did shift $42,000 worth of sales tax again from debt service to County General. That's an additional $3,500 a month to make that $42,000 annual payment back. And then I'm showing the $283,865 in state revenues to help offset revenue shortfalls. Uh, and then uh, the I went to back to the school system today with the fact that their state is recommending to pull all state mandated increases, which means they'll have a difference in their BEP. Uh, the 13352 would be their estimate for next year with no salary increase in it. And the school system pretty well is committed that they're going they're still going to move forward and plan to give a three percent raise uh anyway. Oh they are going with a bonus too. And they're also still going to go with a bonus. And Tina did explain to me that the difference would be roughly about hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars difference between the two they would still roughly get about $6,500 worth of growth naturally to this. School system has uh, been already awarded some CARES Act money, and Tina basically said one way that they can roughly close that $128,000 difference would be with the fact that they're going to go to an online portal system as far as offering uh, classes virtually, they're going to do that through one of the one of the te through with through Pearson Education, and Pearson is will guarantee them a revenue stream of roughly sixty thousand dollars for two years to do that. So there's sixty thousand dollars to offset that, and then that would roughly be sixty eight thousand dollars. And they have a position that is currently in the general purpose school budget for a mental health counselor, which is part of this that goes with the CARES Act, that they're actually going to shift to the CARES Act money for a year. That would be the way that they would actually come back and actually deal with an amendment to decrease their BEP, but also put their budget back into balance. Now, we won't get into all that detail with one the commission. Other, one other comment, too. I talked to John Lumber 
recently about uh, the CARES, CARES Act money. The federal government has given the state of Tennessee $2.8 million, or not million, billion dollars, billion, $2.8 billion. That's for the 730-some thousand that he mentioned the school system. They're getting 730-some thousand dollars of their portion. They haven't determined yet how the state is going to give that to local government. So hopefully there might be an occasion that some more of that money will come our way too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think all 95 counties are going to get a portion of that. I don't know how or what they will attach it to. John Lumberg, he didn't know either. He said there's several conversations going on about the, uh, one area they talked about, and Russell said he didn't know how they would do it, but one area that Timothy Hill talked about was, uh, was uh, filling that gap in the fuel tax money. So, but Russell said, you know, they might have some issues federally doing that, but, but, but I think they are all very aware of how much money every county has lost on fuel tax, and I, I, I would think that that would probably be an area where they look to, to somehow get some money some back, that into, money back into that area. So there's a very good, there's a very good distinct possibility that, that we could get some additional money, and actually, some you know, I know one of the things the mayor and I talked about was some of what we asked from this list we potentially could put back using federal money because federal money basically as long as we supplement what we're doing, we're fine. So I don't know, I haven't heard where that money's gonna go. But I do feel like we will get a portion of it, don't don't yet know what it will be or how much. That's pretty well where the cookie crumbles at this point. <laughs> is there any questions? Any other conversation about this tonight? Is there uh Let's see, do we, do, we approve the tax levy? We approve the tax so, levy. Are there any other matters uh, which may do to come before this committee tonight for official action? Any other comments or questions or anything? Is there a motion to adjourn? I'm pleased. So I'll make a motion we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded by Mr. Scott Mass. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> I'm with you. The only, only comment I would have is I appreciate the hard work.